Welcome back TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here from the camera store. We've got basically Calgary's downtown area to ourselves and that's cool because we've got two very exciting cameras to look at tonight. We've got the Nikon Coolpix A and we've got the new Ricoh GR. Both very exciting cameras and both very comparable. We've got street style compact cameras with full manual control, APS-C size sensors and 28 millimeter lenses. They suit this kind of photography. Now these are the first Ricoh digital cameras we've had a chance to review since their big merger with Pentax. You know, the Nikon Coolpix A as well, this is a huge market that's growing. You know, you gotta remember, you've got cameras like the Fuji X100S, the XE, you know, the X-Pro1, you got Sony's RX1 and RX100s, even the Sigma DP cameras, you're welcome, Sigma. You know, this market's really exploding, and these are two new entries. It's exciting to see what these cameras can do. You know, before we get started, we look at what's different about these cameras. Let's just stop and take a look at what's the same. You know, very, very similar size and weight, almost identical. We've got very interesting 28 millimeter, 2.8 maximum aperture lenses here. I'm sure they'll both be very, very sharp. Same kind of APS-C size 16 megapixel sensor. We're going to see if there's any variance in image quality. You can get viewfinders for both. We've got very similar dial and layout controls, manual controls, screen size is very similar. These cameras look almost like, I don't know, brother and sister. But in order to find out what's going to be down and, and gritty differences between these two, where are those differences really lying? We're going to get Chris Tate, who by the way is a huge Ricoh fan. I'm going to be gracious and let him use the Ricoh. Let's go find him and let's test these out and see what are the differences. Oh, here's Chris Tate finally. Hey, Chris Tate, how you doing, man? Doing okay. Thank you for finally showing up. <laughs> Uh, a great photographer, yes, punctual, <laughs> but uh, you know, you're the big Ricoh geek here and I know you've used the GR4 digital, you've even used the film versions of these, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be nice and let you have this tonight. I've got the Coolpix A, let's go do some challenges, sound good? Sounds great to me. All right, Chris, now from a handling aspect, the camera's like the same weight and size, right? We've already talked about that. Right. But I love this because if you're familiar with the Nikon SLR, you know, holding down the ISO, turning the dial, the menus, the I button, it's all the same as an Nikon SLR. And, it's great. And it's got the down point of the SLR where you have to press and hold with both hands in order to, in order to yeah, change those settings, it's right? more so ambidextrous. Shut your face. This way I get to whip it out super easily. I can set the, I can set the settings individually and, and discreetly. Uh, it's very, very easy to do on the fly when we're out on the streets. So. Okay, well, fine, okay. The other thing I like about this is that I have much better grip on the camera. The little okay. knobby thingy. I've really got a bar, man. That's sweet. That. Look at that. It's so <laughs> not comfortable at all. Okay. Yeah, Very okay. Now, what about screen? I mean, this thing's got a beautiful screen on it. You know, mm -hmm. I've got just under a megapixel, yeah. you know, one million dots. I'm definitely punching in at more than a million on this one, so. <laughs> no beans. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, nice battery in here, you know. <laughs> 250 shots on a full uh, charge. To my 300. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> All right, Chris, so let's talk about the video mode on these two cameras. Now, uh, we did shoot some video footage already. They're very comparable image quality. And uh, for you viewers at home, we've got some footage. We shot it all flat profile, and then we did grade it so you can see the difference there. But my camera has one big advantage over yours. I get full manual control and you're like a point and shoot camera. Except you gotta be really comfortable with your focus because you can't change it after you start recording. Which is which stupid, yes, it's ridiculous, I know. And yours is gonna autofocus. For you sure. know, I mean all- I also do have an ND filter. You do have an which ND is filter. Which pretty handy Okay, fine. But, I mean, I could put an ND filter on this I mean, overall, the fact happen. is, we're not going to shoot video on either of these cameras because they're just terrible. I, they could have made it better. But still, I think overall, I'm going to give the win to the Nikon. Manual control that, is fair. still better than nothing. Okay, Chris, I just want to see which one turns on faster because we're turning these things on and off all the time. So ready? Cool. One, one two, two, three, three go. Oh, pretty much the same, eh? Yeah, pretty close, yeah. pretty close. All right. So on the street, of course, auto-focusing speed, manual focusing, these are important things, right? Very important. And dude, manual focus ring, you don't have that, man. You don't have that. <laughs> it does take a long time to roll wheel this Long thing. time, you yeah. You gotta press the button, you gotta... Yeah, you gotta hold yeah. down your macro button while you turn the For dial sure. to manual focus. It's silly, <laughs> man, it's silly. However, one thing that I really love about the GR that's always been true is uh, is that it's got a really great snap focus mode. Snap so, focus, so explain that. So what uh, you set it to, a preset distance, and if you just hammered down on the shutter button, it, it takes it at that distance. That first, could be pretty sweet. Before it autofocuses. 
focus. Like so. really nice for some hyperfocal. Well, very, very okay, but most of our viewers will be using this in autofocus mode. Right. You know, I don't want to really talk about this part because, yeah, man, the Rico is fast. Hey, <laughs> this thing, it's oh. fast. It handles quickly. Uh, that's really, really important if you're passing somebody yeah. by or if you need to get the shot that only happens yeah. in that split The Rico's second, got the speed. There. And I got to admit, too, in movie mode, this thing takes about as long to focus as it takes to shoot your movie. So that's pretty garbage, <laughs> too. So, yeah. Sure. Kind of disappointing. Okay, fine, Rico. Yeah, yeah, snap focus, autofocus, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the things I really hate about both these cameras, and, and, and why they keep insisting on doing this on the Fujis and stuff as well, is you still have to put the lens into macro mode. And, and it always seems to be these really inconvenient distances where you try to focus and it just doesn't do it. You try it again, doesn't do it, and you're like, oh, I gotta go to macro mode. Okay, I wanna call a little bit of a truce, a little bit of a ceasefire here when it comes to okay. image quality, okay? <laughs> same sensors, same megapixels. We shot this poster wall. Right? For sure. As we go through the higher ISOs, 800 and above here, honestly, Chris, I think these things look the same. They both do very, very well. Uh, I'd say the Rico might be a little bit sharper. Yeah, I guess you but, would say that, wouldn't you? Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, fine. Okay, well, okay, but JPEGs, we all know the Nikon does beautiful JPEGs out of the box, and any Pentax or Pentax related product kind of sucks at JPEGs, doesn't it? But the JPEG processing, way, way more options to, to do it on the Ricoh than so, the Nikon. Yeah, so. so it sounds like you don't want to do a ceasefire. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay, so Love you shoot in, off, yeah, you shoot in raw, oh, yeah, go to your playback, try to zoom in. Touche. <laughs> You know, there's, there's one kind of annoying thing on this camera. You know, we're kind of midway through our shoot here, and if I want to get into movie mode, um, you'd think there'd be a dial on top or something, a movie dial on top. Now, I know the secret now. I, I hit the I button, and I go into my drive mode, past continuous, and it's hidden, and there's movie recording, and that's how I get into movie recording. It's the first time I've ever seen that on an Icon camera like that. Now. I got to know where to find that. So, and once you know where it is, it's not hard to use it. But Jordan tried to do this, not knowing where it was, took him hours, all right? I mean, he was mad. Anyways, once you find it, it's fine. But getting it in the first place, yikes. So, you've been warned. So, uh, Jordan, now that Chris is out of earshot momentarily here, um, just got to say, autofocus at low light, not really doing it for me on this Rico right now. Um, so I'm going to set it to manual focus, and that's going to that's going to speed things up a little bit here for us. No, I don't want Chris Tate to hear this part. Okay, but the manual focus on this camera, I found a problem. You know, if I if I gently touch it, it's nice and smooth, no problems, butter smooth. But the minute I give any sort of pressure on this ring, it grabs and grinds. It's terrible garbage. Don't tell Tate. So Chris, how do you feel about the 28 focal length on these you know, guys? I like 28 millimeters. I think it's it's wide enough to be interesting. I do enjoy it, yeah, yeah. but I'm more of a 50 millimeter kind of guy. I like the versatility. Fair enough. Uh, I find actually 28's a bit non-committal. Uh, it's it's wide, but it's not wide enough. I, I really like that this has a 21 adapter. Uh, I much prefer 21. Uh, I want an adapter. to get close, and uh, unfortunately, it is quite bulky. Right. But it also has a 35 punch in, so it's not quite 50, but it does give you a little bit. But still, that lets you visualize and frame, whereas I've exactly. got to crop afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. So Jordan, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's really hard to shoot street with the camera crew around. You did that last time, hey? So yeah. should, we, should we just take off? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Chris, so very similar cameras, very hard to pick a clear winner. Uh, I was really impressed by the image quality overall. Absolutely, uh, high ISO, uh, ISO performance is very, very good on both these cameras. Yeah. Uh, the sharpness is really good, um, Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I did like on the Rico was the one-handed handling, but you know, both are... Yeah, I really didn't mind the Nikon Coolpix handling at all. The only thing I didn't like about this is the autofocus is just a little too slow to get grab shots on the street. I have something to admit here, Chris. Uh, actually, the autofocus of this guy in the dark, not so great. Really? I, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, if we're going to be honest and come clean, this manual focus ring that I was talking about being better than yours, it sucks, man. It's grabby <laughs> and chunky. I don't get it. 
So, do we have a clear winner then? Well, this guy does come with $300 less on the price tags. Yikes! Yeah, that's a pretty <laughs> big deal. Okay, so not to mention the fact that it's a little sharper at high ISO, a little bit faster, the price tag. All right, you win, we give it to the Ricoh. <laughs> it's a very cool camera, and if you're a Nikon SLR user, maybe that's worth the extra bucks. All right, man, thanks so much, and we'll see you guys later.